This may be the most disturbing thing across all of unexplained phenomena. Alien abductions. In modern times, began late September 1961, when Betty and Barney Hill were abducted on a country road in New Hampshire. Theirs, and the stories of so many others, are as horrifying and bizarre as they're near identical. Let's explore. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Code Blue where we explore the realm of unexplained phenomena. I am Thor and thank you for listening. Today we're talking about the alien abduction syndrome. Ancient and medieval stories of abductions exist from across the world. They don't use the word aliens but hidden people, visitors from other worlds like beings and spirits. They are all in essence describing the same thing. Alien abductees are nowadays referred to as experiences, and the general story goes something like this. A person or persons are traveling down a country road at night with little to no traffic surrounding them, when a light is detected at some distance hovering beyond the hills or the trees. Lights that don't look like airplanes, helicopters, buildings, or shooting stars, or anything the experiences can identify. At some point, the light turns towards them. It sees them and becomes aware of their stare. And perhaps it's the other way around. They decide this to happen. The light then hovers towards the vehicle, often accompanied by a disruption to electronics, loss of control of one's actions, confusion, and a full-on breakdown of the vehicle itself. More often than not, the next thing the experiencer remembers is driving down the road again, perhaps in a different location, or even on the wrong side of the road. Sometimes the abduction takes place right out of the bedroom, at night, while tucked into bed. The subject is suddenly surrounded by small gray beings that look like clones, and they walk right through the walls to escort the experiencer back to their craft. Later on, months or years later, They remember fractions of nightmares depicting strange beings surrounding them and leading them through a beam of light up to a craft in the sky. They remember laying on a hospital-like gurney or a surgery table and being poked with instruments, penetrating their skin in their eyes or ears without the ability to move, scream, protest, or get away. It's a nightmare thousands of people worldwide describe with a terrifying conclusion reached by numerous psychiatrists who study this phenomena, it simply isn't a figment of their imagination. There is both physical as well as circumstantial evidence. Bud Hopkins, a recognized artist, a fellow at the National Academy of Design, and buddies with the likes of de Kooning and Rocco, is actually better known for his research into the alien abduction syndrome with his publication of Missing Time in 1981 and its follow-up work, Intruders, in 1987. He had his own experience in 1964 off of Cape Cod, and when his friend declared a similar experience a few days later in the early 70s, Bud Hopkins devoted his time to investigating the phenomena. Along with John E. Mack, Harvard professor of psychology, and David Jacobs, history professor at Temple University, Bud Hopkins designed a scale of questions called the Roper Poll. This questionnaire approach is commonly used in psychology, identifying conditions like split personalities, schizophrenia, and in this case designed to detect if an alien encounter might have occurred to people reporting psychological trauma involving missing time and strange encounters, carefully designed not to lead the witness. Of 6,000 subjects reporting, extrapolating to scale, Hopkins and Mack proposed experiencers of the alien abduction syndrome were likely to run into millions in the U.S. and tens of millions worldwide. 
tens of millions of human beings are likely to have been abducted. From Hopkins and Mack studies, we can also establish patterns in common to hundreds of abductees, like missing time, where experiencers believe a minute or two has passed with their attention to the road blimping out for a split second, but their watch and time a destination indicates something completely different. And sometimes a missing time becomes a case of a missing person who resurfaces in a different location, like the story of Travis Walton, who disappeared in Apache National Forest, Arizona, literally in front of his fellow lumberjacks' noses, only to reappear five days later, walking along the highway completely naked. He and his friends all passed a polygraph test, confirming their story of a light in the forest that they were drawn to, and that Travis who walked in front of them was airlifted into a craft through a beam of light. That's when the rest fled back to the truck and drove away. Travis, on the other hand, remembers laying in a hospital-like room, attended to by three bald small beings. And when he resisted, a human-looking creature with a lumberjack helmet was brought in to calm him down. Another disturbing aspect of the alien abduction syndrome is an apparent pattern of interest in the human reproductive organs. Male sperm is often collected with bizarre stories of extraction tools and sexual stimulation methods that include robotic strip dancers and lovers in the precise fantasy form of the abductee in question. Even more disturbing are the stories of pregnancies of women who don't remember having had intercourse yet find themselves at a health clinic weeks later with a declared pregnancy one or two months mature. There are also tragic losses of pregnancies without medical explanation. One can only imagine the psychological trauma this causes with long-lasting effects on the victims. Many abductees have been shown infants, toddlers and offsprings that look almost human but not quite, suggesting they are the biological parents of hybrid children born to a higher purpose among the stars. Implants smaller than a rice speckle looking like electronic devices have been extracted. Burn marks, triangular or hexagonal patterns on the abdomen of an experiencer, and in one instance, the extraction of black tarry substance that was then presented to the experiencer as the cure for his imminent lung cancer. Telepathic communication is described by the majority of experiences. Sometimes a rapid imagery download occurs, to a point of the recipient passing out from mental overload. Sometimes telepathy turns into a mind dialogue, topics turns to environmental protection, with a critical view of human inability to self-govern. The alien abductors sometimes reveal they have been watching over us for millennia, even taking ownership of human origins and domain over their destiny. In the case of Betty and Barney Hill, who were pioneering mixed-race couple in their time, a husband and wife, civil servants, credible, outstanding citizens, and Barney served on the board of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. They were extensively interviewed with hours of audio recordings by both police and military authorities preserved to this day at the University of New Hampshire. There, Betty describes vivid dreams being shown strange hieroglyphs and a star map, one she was able to redraw during an interview revealing the home origins of the abductors, pinpointing the name and location of the star system they called home, the Zeta Reticuli binary star system, approximately 37 light years away. Betty had no astronomical interest or expertise prior. As to purpose, until we gather further evidence enabling extrapolation of multiple aspects of the unexplained phenomena, we should rely on experience or testimony. One thing is a fact. They continue to interact with us through observation, interference, control, and abduction, systematically, to this day, at will. You can watch or listen to this and other podcasts of the Code Blue series on Project Blue Book. And please check out bluebook.tv for more programs exploring the unexplained.
It's free. Please subscribe and each day, let's show compassion and kindness. I am Thor, and thanks for listening. See you next time.